In 1934, the second edition of the World Cup took place in Italy, a nation under the fascist dictatorship of Benito Mussolini. Whilst Italy would take the World Cup home for the first ever time, the tournament was marred with political controversy and alleged match-fixing. This is a story of Italia 34, Coppa del Duce. In 1932, Italy was selected as the hosts for the 1934 World Cup. They had been under the rule of Benito Mussolini since the early 1920s, and Mussolini, a fan of football, saw the sport as a perfect propaganda opportunity. He saw it as the ideal way to appeal to the common man and bring the people of the nation together. One of Mussolini's closest confidants, Achille Storace, enforced propaganda for the competition. Over 30,000 posters were placed across the country, and everyday items such as stamps and cigarettes had World Cup imagery placed on them. Many nations refused to participate. Uruguay did not travel, as several European nations refused to travel to Uruguay for the first World Cup four years earlier, and the home nations also had no interest in partaking. After Chile and Peru withdrew in solidarity with Uruguay, Brazil and Argentina qualified without playing a match. Despite being hosts, Italy had to partake in the qualifying process, the only time this would ever happen in the World Cup. Italy's place at the tournament was sealed after a 4-0 win over Greece. Their great side, under the management of legendary Vittorio Pozzo, were amongst the favourites. With the tournament fast approaching, Mussolini continued to use it as an opportunity to promote his rule. The cities which games would take place in were carefully selected. Mussolini made a show by queuing with supporters to purchase his ticket for the opening game, before taking his seat in the Royal Box. On the opening day of the tournament, eight fixtures would take place, all at the same time. Mussolini wanted to show how competent his government was, that they could organise eight high-profile football matches at once. Italy opened the tournament in style, with a 7-1 win over the USA. A downside to the games taking place at the same time was that the attendances were below expectation, but Mussolini told radio commentators no matter what to comment on how full the stadiums were. Italy would face Spain in the quarter-finals in Florence, where controversies would start to come to the fore. A brutal encounter saw a number of players forced to leave the pitch through injury, including a broken leg for Mario Pizziolo, who would never play for the Azzurri again as a result. The game finished 1-1, and as a consequence, a replay would be contested. Spain had so many injuries that they were forced to make seven changes. The replay took place the next day, Giuseppe Miazza gave the Italians the lead early on, and Spain had two goals controversially ruled out. Amidst suspicion of match-fixing, Italy won 1-0 and advanced to the semi-finals. The two semi-finals would take place at the same time. Italy would face Austria. Austria had a legendary team, known as the Wunder Team, managed by Hugo Meisel. Italy and Austria fought a fierce contest, with the Italians managing to keep Austrian star Matthias Sindelar out of the game. A characteristic defensive display from Italy meant the Austrians could not break through, and an early goal from Enrique Huita sent Italy through to the World Cup final. Meanwhile, the other semi-final between Czechoslovakia and Germany was a suspicious affair. The referee for the match was Italian Ronaldo Barlasina. He made a number of questionable decisions in favour of the Czechs, who many felt would be a weaker opposition for Italy to face. Czechoslovakia controversially advanced to the final, after winning 3-1. The final would take place in Rome, in front of a reported crowd of 55,000 spectators. The match was tight, and once again, Italy faced a physical battle. Neither side was able to find a breakthrough until the 71st minute. Czechoslovakia took the lead through Antonin Puc, Italy's World Cup appeared to be slipping away from them, but with nine minutes remaining, Raimundo Orsi levelled the scores to send the game into extra time. And only five minutes into the extra period, Angelo Schiavo scored to put Italy in front. The Azzurri held on to their lead, and Vittorio Pozzo's men were world champions for the first ever time. After full time, a grand ceremony took place. Fascist anthem Gio Vineza was played, and the Italians were handed the Jules Rimet trophy, along with a special cup that Mussolini had commissioned for the side, six times larger than the World Cup trophy. 
Only four days after the final, Mussolini would meet with Adolf Hitler for the first ever time, with no doubt that the World Cup victory had helped solidify his reputation. Hitler and Mussolini agreed to support each other, which would set into motion events that would eventually lead to the Second World War. Vittorio Pozzo's side would retain the World Cup four years later, with Mussolini still having a strong influence over proceedings. It was sadly the start of a common theme of World Cups being used as dictatorship propaganda, seen later in editions of the World Cup such as Argentina in 1978 and the upcoming World Cup in Qatar. A lot of the truth from the 1934 World Cup will forever remain obscured, but with so many suspicious acts and allegations around the tournament, there is indeed no smoke without fire, and despite how great a side Italy were, their victory in 1934 will forever be shrouded in controversy.